Welcome back to The Woodcrafter. Today's episode, we're going to have a look at the AT152 OVS. That's a trade level bobbin sander from Axminster. That sounds good. Stick around. So hi and welcome back to The Woodcrafter. Today we're going to unbox, set up and have a first look at this bobbin sander from Axminster. So without any further ado, let's get the thing out of its packaging. So this is the first time I've actually opened this, so I don't know what's going to be inside. Okay, as you can see, it comes with the instruction manual, probably a good time to look at the specs of this machine. Okay, so this is the at 1520 v S, and that's the bobbin sander from Axminster. It's a 240 volt machine, uh, one phase, and a spindle speed of 1425 revs per minute and a drum speed of 1500. It oscillates at 29 oscillations per minute. It's got an overall stroke up to down of 24 millimeters. It takes two bobbin sizes, 140 and 152 millimeters. The table height stands at 465 millimeters and that table will tilt from zero to 45 degrees. Overall table size of 370 by 370 and it's got a dust extraction of 50 millimeters and it's a heavy beast it's 30 kilograms just for the device itself so we'll get it out of the box and we'll have a further look now this is not going to lift directly out of the box so we'll have to apply a bit of intelligence to this so i'm going to put it on its side and i'm going to open the base of the box and then lift the box off well that's a theory anyway Okay. Oh. okay, so now, in theory, we can lift this off. Carefully going to take the polystyrene off here and just make sure that no small parts are going to fall out. So inside the kit we've got a couple of instruction books, the one that was sat on top of the box inside and then one pack of the machine itself. And now we know what OVS stands for, it's the Oscillating Vertical Spindle Sander, Bobbin Sander for short. And I got two instructions, one of these printed out and stapled together and then a more glossy one and we'll look at the difference in those in a second. I've got one, two, three, four different insert plates. I've got what looks to be a 100 to 50 millimeter dust extractor and on the back here there's a 50 millimeter extractor port so that's stepping up to 100 millimeters. There's an emergency stop cover obviously for the buttons. Small bag of spanners, quite good quality by the look of it. And one, two, three, four, five bobbin spindles and then one, two, three, four, five sleeves. So we'll look at the specifications for that. Also loose inside the kit was this bolt washer and um, spring washer. I'm not sure what this is for. No doubt we'll find out as we go through. Now this is a cast iron tabletop and as always with Axminster it comes well oiled and there was a protective cover on this. So my first job is I'm just going to spray this off and clean it up to get rid of that oil. I don't like the oil going everywhere. I'm just using rubbing alcohol to clean off the oil. This used to be a bottle of Blade and Bit Cleaner from Axminster. This is now full of rubbing alcohol which is exactly the same thing. Just make it cheaper. Just squirt that on. So initial impressions are it's okay. The cast iron tabletop looks really good, seems nice and flat. The main body is pressed steel. It's a bit rough in some areas. There's some seams at the back here that um, aren't perfectly joining, but there's nothing sharp that's gonna hurt me. And on this side, there's one or two scratches 
on the machine here and this is straight from the factory so obviously suspect the pressed steel is powder coated by the look of it and i can see here where that powder coating or that enamel whatever it is has just chipped off at the side now mine has come fitted with a 13 amp uk plug that's fixed in it's hardwired in so if you're buying it for Europe, you probably have to change that plug or just check with Axmans to see whether that comes with a Euro plug or not. So it is rated at 230 volts, so probably not a direct fit if you're not in a 230 volt country. Let's have a look at the instructions and see why we've got two types and what they're saying to us. In the cheap book, printed together and stapled, it's going to give us a table of contents, the safety rules, specifications, the machine legend, i.e. the parts of the machines, the overall size, where to install it safely, how to use it, how to tilt the table, how to mount a spindle drum, selecting the drums for different uses, maintaining the sander, troubleshooting, and assembly diagram. In the more update posh book, we have table of contents, safety rules, specifications, machine legend, dimensions, so basically the same things. Okay, so both instructions seem to tell us the same things, safety rules, safety rules, the legend and the legend seems to be the same, the dimension diagrams seem to be the same, instructions for operations will seem to be the same, tilting the table is the same, mounting the spindle drum is the same, Although the diagrams in this one are somewhat clearer than the diagrams in the higher quality one, strangely enough. Selection guides are the same, and obviously we now talk about the one, two, three table inserts, although we have four, so that's interesting. It's got the maintenance guide in this one, same maintenance guide in that one, and the same troubleshooting, and the same parts list. So both of these are pretty much the same. This is just a high quality version, so we don't need both of these. We'll put one on one side. So on this side of the machine, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five holes. And those holes, one assumes, are for storing our spindles in. Now there's no setup guide with this at all. Um, so we'll have to make it up as we go along. Now again, these are covered in grease, so we'll just clean those off a little bit. So it comes with these additional bobbins. Um, again, no instructions, so I assume we just loosen this clip off and slide this collar on. This one seems to have a thread on the top, but there's nothing in the kit to actually use that with. So there's no guidelines what to do with these, but it seems pretty straightforward. I'm just going to loosen off this nut on that clip. I'm just going to drop the sanding disc on. Quite tight, so we'll push that down to the bottom. All the way down like so. And then I assume I just tighten that up. Now this one's a bit strange because it looks like there should be a threaded portion to go on top of there. And if you look on this one, you can see we've got this washer and this captured nut, but we've also got these plastic plates on this. I'll drop Axminster a note and ask him what's going on. You can see, hopefully on the camera, there's quite a lot of clearance. This spindle finishes about here and we've got this part at the top. Almost so there should be a plastic insert that screws down inside that just to sort of keep this in place and give it a bit more friction fit. So I'm wondering whether there's a part missing. Not mentioned in the manual, but hey ho. We'll put that on one side for now. So you can see everything's got a storage space here at the front. The reality is they're very loose, so they will fall out. So if you did want to mount this on one of those pivoting tops that some people do, you're going to have to devise something to hold these into position. Now in terms of inserting these, we select the spindle that we want. There's a collet inside here that needs tightening up. 
and each of these has a nut on here. So you screw these into place as far as they will go. We're going to use a 17 millimeter spanner on the bottom collet and a 17 millimeter spanner just to hold the bobbin in place and then just nip up that collet. It seems quite easy, lots of room to get to here. And you don't want to go mad on this like, like most things, just nip it down and that's a good job. Now there's nowhere to store the, the spanners so we'll devise something for that further down the line. And I just want to drop this little cover on. I've got a feeling this probably was on and fell off as I was taking it out of the box. And that's obviously a stay put stop so we've got the starts and the stop. Use, that locks it in and there's no way the machine's going to start. Now I know it's a safety feature but I'm not really a lover of this type of um, system. I find you end up fighting it and it's quite a cheap design to be honest with you. So obviously once we've got the bobbin in place that's pretty much it. Now in terms of selecting the right size bobbin it depends on what you're going to make and in terms of selecting the inserts you get one that's about the right size for the bobbin which is probably going to be this one. There's a little mark here so that just little key that keys into place. And that's pretty much it. Jobs are good and that should be ready to go. Now on the back here, the dust extraction port, as I say, and it comes with this 50 millimeter to 100 millimeter adapter. That's a bit of a tight fit, but we'll ultimately just slot into there like so. Not a lot of clearance in that, but we should be able to get a connector on it, which is good. And here on the side, there's a knob here, and ah, there's a knob on that side there. And just taking those on and off just allows you to pivot the bed. Now, obviously when you do that, this plate here is going to get in the way. So, the kit also comes with a slightly wider elongated hole that allows you to get to that 45 degrees. On this side, the side where the bobbins are, there is a scale that's calibrated from 45 through to zero and then back up to 45 again. And that will suggest the table pivots 45 in either direction. In reality, in this direction, it's only going to pivot to the scale is reading 15 degrees. So 15 degrees in this direction and 45 degrees in that direction. So with this set at 45, the actual angle is coming in at 134. So it's about a degree out, which is probably okay. And taking it back to the zero position. Which is there. That should give me 90 degrees, and that's coming in at 89.6, so about 0.4 of a degree out. And I guess that's reasonable. And to be honest with you, we don't tend to use these type of guides anyway on our machines. We are much more likely to use an angle finder and get the bed where we need it to be for the job that we're going at. Now similarly, there's nowhere to store these, so we're going to have to contrive some sort of storage device for both the infills and for the um, spanners. These are metal, quite heavy, so I guess they're good quality. I was expecting plastic inserts, so that's quite a nice surprise that they're not plastic. Now the instructions do tell me that the machine is furnished with 10 drums, which it isn't, it's got five, one, two, three, four, and five. So unless I'm missing something, that's misinformation. And it does tell me that you choose the appropriate table insert to go with the appropriate drum. Uh, looks like you can get more drums in. They're not supplied with the kit that I can tell. And they will go from a quarter of an inch up to four inches in diameter. Looking on the Axminster website, it actually tells us that it comes with five spindles and it's got a six millimeter spindle, which is the thinnest one here. It's then got a 12 millimeter spindle. It's got a 16 millimeter spindle, a 38 millimeter spindle, 
and it's got a 50 millimeter spindle and you can get one more optional spindle which is 76 millimeters and for that you've got to buy a different size insert. The overall price of this machine and this was in June 2020 was £379.96. Pence. The grit that's on all of these is 100 grit, which I guess is a good mid of the road one. Now it tells me here on the website that the spindles are 152 millimeters in length for the 38 and the 50 size and 140 millimeters for the others. Now if I measure the longer ones here, they are actually 140. So the bigger one, the 38 and the 50 require a 140 millimeter sleeve and the narrower ones actually require the 150 millimeter sleeve. So the information on the website is actually backwards, um, which is what it is, I guess. And um, that makes a lot of sense because when I was trying to buy spare sleeves for this, I couldn't find any of the length specified on the Axminster description. Now Axminster obviously sell different grits, actually in the jet range, not the Axminster range, strangely enough. And they've got a grit range of 60 all the way through to 120 and those come in in a variety of different bobbin diameters right. so it looks like getting hold of the sanding bobbins themselves is not a big problem and they're relatively cheap on Axminster so it's well worthwhile I think getting a range of those and again there's nowhere to store them so we are going to need to find a bit of a storage solution for ourselves so there you go that's it unboxed to set up and ready to use pretty straightforward really. It's got a press steel case of okay quality. There's no sharp pieces here I'm going to cut myself on in use but around the back where some of these joints are here it's a little bit weak and pressed and you can start to see the seams. It's got a few chips out of the box but I'm not overly concerned about that but it would be nice to get one that was pristine after you paid nearly £400 for the device. Comes with a variety of bobbins 612, 16, 38 and 50 with 100 grit paper installed. This one is a bit strange, you need to talk to Axminster about what's going on there. It's also got the appropriate spanners and a variety of inserts, so you're pretty much good to go outside of the box. So what we'll do now, we'll give it, put it through its paces. I've printed out some French curves, so I'm just going to come into this piece of oak and let's just make some sort of pattern on this scrap piece of oak here. something like just something like that something nice and simple I'll rough this out on the bandsaw and then we'll use the bobbin sander to clean it up and see what it looks like so there you go very rough and ready shape and we will see what we can do with this bobbin sander I've never used this before so on first test I'm just gonna put my glasses on stand to one side and well, that's pretty nice isn't it not bad at all. And we'll see how we get on. So there you go. It had no problems at all with that and it's made quite a nice surface on it. So that was 40 millimeter thick oak, American white oak, and it didn't really struggle with that. And I'm not sure how often I'd be doing that thickness of oak on this machine. And obviously this is a hundred grit paper and we can come down to, was it 40 grit or 60 grit that we said when we looked on the website? So yeah, that's going to work pretty well, I think. Uh, in terms of dust collection, the bench is clean, the machine itself is clean. I can't smell anything in the air, which is always a good sign. And this has got a little bit of dust on there, but nothing that you described as concerning. So there you go, the AT152 OVS oscillating sander, the bobbin sander from Axminster. Seems to do the job. We'll give it a review in a few months' time to see how we're getting on with it. But for now, I hope you found this useful. See you next time on The Woodcrafter.